everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Sew Custom. Today's video, as you will have already seen from the thumbnail, is how I sewed up this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is a polyester, a satin polyester. It has a gorgeous sheen to it and it's in this lovely blush pink and ivory. And on to the cutting out. This is my front. I have one layer of that fabric underneath my pattern piece and I'm cutting my fabric on the bias. That's just going to give the coil neck a really beautiful drape. And I don't have a separate facing for this piece. It's attached to the top of the pattern. So I'm just marking it there at each side with a notch. So the first thing to do to this piece is to finish that facing edge. So just running it through the overlocker. I'll give that a press off camera and this is the result. Happy with that. And here just folding my facing at those notches you just seen me snip and pinning the short edge to the armhole. And ready to stitch. And I want to do two things here. I want to stay stitch the armhole and also catch that facing at the top. So using a tiny little stitch length, sewing about a millimetre or so inside my seam allowance. So that's that done. I've given that a press and this is the result. So that's my armhole all stayed and my facing nicely stitched down at the side. So the next thing to do here is to trim down that seam allowance at the armholes. So I'm cutting here quite close to that stay stitching line. I'll finish that off camera and that's as much as I can do to the front at this stage. So I'm going to set it aside to work on the back. My fabric underneath is on the fold. So the first thing to do here is to stay stitch the armholes just in the same way as I did the front using a tiny little stitch length sewing about a millimetre or two inside my seam allowance. Of course I've done that on both sides. They've had a press and this is the result. And the next thing to do is to finish off that back neckline. And for this little top I've chosen a bias finish. So I've cut myself a strip of the outer fabric on the bias. My fabric is right sides together, popping in a pin and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance, trying to make sure that my edges are lined up the whole way around. Taking this nice and easy and back stitching to finish. So now I just need to trim down that excess seam allowance. So taking off probably about two thirds. Pressing the bias away from the bodice, but making sure that that trim seam allowance in underneath is butted up against the bias. Ready to understitch. Back stitching to start using a little bit of a longer stitch length. Sewing here about a millimetre or two away from the bodice. Through the bias, through that trim seam allowance in underneath. And finishing with a back stitch. So now to take care of that raw edge. So I'm just folding it in underneath. Pressing. Folding again. And pressing. I'll finish pressing and pinning off camera. 
and ready to stitch. Using that same longer stitch length, starting with the back stitch, sewing right along that inner crease edge, taking this nice and gently and finishing with a back stitch. So that's my back neckline all closed up. I've given it a press and now the last thing I have to do to this piece for now is just to trim down that excess seam allowance at the armhole. Just like I did on the front. So now that that's done, I'm ready for straps. So I'm going to attach the front to the back, starting at one armhole, coming up to the top, leaving myself enough room for a strap, and then finishing at the other armhole. And my straps and finishing are both going to be from bias. So I've just folded my bias along its length and pressed, and then pressed the raw edges into the center. And to help me out, I'm using my bias foot, this one's a little bit different to the one I normally use, but it works in exactly the same way in that it will just wrap that bias right along the seam edge and give me a nice clean finish. So I'm making sure my seam edge is lined up with the centre of the bias and just stitching really slowly the whole way around, coming up towards the top of my front neckline and now just continuing to feed that bias through the foot until I have the right length of strap and then popping in my back armhole and stitching right down to the underarm. So that's my armholes, both front and back, all finished. And I've got that gorgeous bound strap in between. I've given them a good press. Happy with that. So now to close up the sides. So I've decided upon French seams here. So just laying my front over my back. My fabric is wrong sides together this time and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start. Sewing here at about half of my seam allowance. And finishing with a back stitch. So that's my first line of stitches sewn. So before I can sew my second line, I just need to trim down that excess seam allowance. So just like before, taking off probably about two thirds here. Pressing that trim seam allowance to one side. Now laying my fabric this time right sides together and pressing again making sure that that seam that I've just sewn is right on the edge of the crease. And ready to stitch. Back stitching to start. Same thing again here, sewing at about half of my seam allowance and finishing with a back stitch. So that just needs a good press, which I've went ahead and done off camera. Happy with that. And now the very last thing I have to do is to take care of the hem. And for this top, I've decided on a double folded hem. So just pressing in underneath by about half of my allowance, folding again by the same amount and pressing. And ready to stitch sewing right along the inner crease edge using that same longer stitch length as before taking this nice and easy here trying to be as neat as possible and back stitching to finish and once it's at a good press this is how it looks and with that this little top is complete so I've got my French seams at the side I've got that gorgeous coil neck at the front with self-facing, my bias bound armholes and straps, and back neck. And this is what it looks like on.
so I'm super happy with how this has turned out. The fit is so nice, really comfortable. The shape of the cowl is just gorgeous, very feminine. I love the length of the blouse. I love the little delicate thin straps. I will definitely be making more of these. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you on Friday. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye folks.